All right, so in the last segment, we talked about a divide and conquer algorithm. And now I want to talk to you about uh, another example of an efficient algorithm that also exemplifies a different algorithmic paradigm, uh, which is called greedy algorithms. And the idea of greedy algorithms is you're trying to make some, usually some sort of selection out of your input uh, to optimize some function. And greedy is basically just you go through your input and you take the first thing that sort of looks the best and you just take that. Um, and usually there are constraints where taking that prevents you from taking something else. So greedy algorithms don't always work, but there are a lot of cases where greedy algorithms do work. And we'll see an example of that now. So the problem we're going to look at here is called the minimum spanning tree. And the input here is going to be a graph. So um, it has some vertices like this that are connected by some edges, something like that. Okay. Um, and it will have, uh, it can have, let's say, lengths on the edges. So maybe this edge is length one, this edge is length two, one. And for simplicity, let's just say everything else is one, but the point is just they can have different weights. Okay. And the output is a spanning tree, which I'll tell you what that is in a second, uh, of minimal length. So um, a spanning tree here is a selection of the edges such that among the selected edges, you can get from every vertex to every other vertex without using any of the unselected edges. And the length of a spanning tree is just the total length of the edges that appear. So for example, our spanning tree might be something like that. Oh, right, and there's another condition. So you can certainly get on the purple edges from every vertex to every other vertex. Um, but there's only the condition for it to be a tree is that the purple edges should have no loops, which is the same as saying there's only one way to get from each vertex to each other vertex using the purple edges. So if I want to go from here to here, there's no way for me to do it except this. Right? So I'm not allowed to have both of these edges in my spanning tree. Otherwise, it's just a spanning subgraph, not a spanning tree. Um, there are lots of applications where you actually want a spanning tree. For example, in scheduling processors and how they communicate information to one another, um, or in routing goods through a city. There are, there are lots of examples where you want to do this. And you usually want to minimize length. Sometimes instead of length, there's a cost to using each edge. The principle is the same. You want to minimize the total cost. OK, so um, how are we going to find a minimal spanning tree? Well. The answer is, of course, we're going to do it greedily. All right, so we start out, this is our graph. We haven't picked any of the edges yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to maintain a list of which vertices are connected to which other vertices in, by purple edges. So when we start out, none of the vertices are going to be connected. And we're going to pick two things that are disconnected and just take the shortest edge that will connect them. So for example, we might pick these two vertices. We have no choice. There's only one edge that connects them. So that edge is going to be in our spanning tree. OK. And now these two vertices are sort of joined. So in our list, we know that these two are connected. So all we have to do to connect this one to this one is connect any one in its group, in its connected group to this one. Okay. So we might go along like this. We might look at these two and say, these two are disconnected. So we have to pick an edge between them. In this case, again, we don't have a choice. So we could pick this. Um, you go along, you say, OK, this little connected piece is not connected to this vertex by any purple path. Um, there's only one edge which will do it. So again, we pick this one. So far, we haven't had any choices. Nothing's been really interesting. Uh, now I want to connect this connected piece to this vertex. And I should say, the order in which I choose to do this connection is totally arbitrary. Um, so again, there's only one edge that does that here. And I can go along and I can get this edge, and then this edge. OK, and now, now comes the interesting part. 
I have two connected pieces. These four vertices are connected, and these four vertices are connected, but these pieces are not connected to one another. Okay. And now I actually have a choice of which edge do I use to connect them. And the obvious answer is choose the shorter one. Okay. So I choose this. Okay. And then I claim that this is a minimum spanning tree for this graph. Its weight, we said all of the edges except for this one had weight one, so its weight is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's weight seven. Before I prove to you that this actually is a minimum spanning tree, um, let's analyze how long this algorithm took. So um, basically at each step, you find two of the connected pieces and you look through the edges um, and you see which is the minimum possible edge. Right? So a very naive analysis is just each time you connect two things, you're certainly not looking at more than the total number of edges, right? So each time you connect two things, you might look at, let's say, E is the total number of edges. So there are, let's say, E edges and V vertices. And how many times do I have to look for an edge? Well, I start out with N vertices, or sorry, V vertices, all of which are disconnected from one another. And uh, every time I add an edge, I'm doing that to connect two things that weren't connected. So I reduce the number of disconnected pieces by one. So I have to do that at most v times. Right? So the running time of this algorithm is v times e. Okay. Now, what's the size of the input here? Because right? we want to know what is the running time relative to the size of the input. Well, how is a graph represented in a computer is really what that question is. One way is as uh, what's called an adjacency matrix, which is you make a little matrix. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. So this is going to be an eight by eight matrix where the rows correspond to the vertices. The columns also correspond to the vertices. And I put a one in some position if there's an edge between the vertex corresponding to the row and the vertex corresponding to the column. And everywhere else I put zeros. So the size of this input is roughly the number of vertices squared. Right? Um, there are other representations you can use, um, but the total number of edges here, notice, is also roughly the number of vertices squared. So this is certainly polynomial in the size of the input, and it's actually pretty close to uh, the size of the input. OK, so now let's see why did this greedy strategy work. Okay. And um, to see this, let's go back to the, the sort of crucial decision point, which was when we were here, we had two connected components, um, and we had some choice of which edges to use. Well, notice if we have two connected purple components, um, that means that if I remove these edges, the resulting graph is disconnected. In a spanning tree, uh, the purple edges have to connect the graph. So if I remove both of these edges, they disconnect the graph. So any spanning tree has to use at least one of these edges. Right? So if it's going to use at least one of these edges, obviously it should use the shortest one to, be, uh, to have minimum weight. Right? So it should use that one. And the point really is, if it had picked this one, well, don't do that. Pick this one instead. Right? Because you know that sort of the purpose of this one was to connect these two pieces. Um, and this one serves that same purpose, but at a lower cost. So in this case, uh, and I should say this algorithm is due to Borovka, I think in 1920. It's quite a classical algorithm. Um, notice that 20 is actually before computers existed. It's before... Uh, the notion of algorithm was formalized, um, but the idea was still around in, in the 20s. Um, and it's a, it's a very beautiful idea because if I just tell you this problem, uh, the naive thing to do is, well, you just sort of start trying to do things. You start trying different subsets of edges, and the running time there is, is really horrible depending on how naive you are about it. Um, but here is an example of it's a greedy algorithm. Right? So there are lots of other greedy algorithms out there, but it's also, and greedy algorithms tend to have this feature, it's very simple, but it gets the job done quickly and exactly. Um, so this is our second example of an algorithmic paradigm, which is greedy. 
Um, and we'll see lots of problems where it doesn't work, but it's sort of the first thing you should think of when you come across an algorithmic problem.